Hey guys, OG Albani here, bringing you guys our next Draft League typing tier list. Today we're going to be going over the Dark type, honestly seen as one of the most important types in the format, not only due to its key resistances and things like Dark and um, opposing Ghost types and things like that, but also in making it to where you don't lose to those setup sweeping Calm Mind Pokemon that are going to set up a Calm Mind and an Iron Defense and Stored Power sweep through your team. A lot of teams really do feel like it's pretty much required to at least have some kind of dark type on the team to deter that kind of, you know, setup and shenanigans. So, um, we're going to be talking about a pretty important one. I think the Paldea decks in particular is very, very potent with strong offensive dark types. Um, probably the best, you know, at least better than Sword and Shield last gen when it had limited decks and things like that. So, there's some pretty scary ones. And, um, we have the Quartet Legends, a lot of Paradox Mods, a lot of crazy stuff added. So, if you guys do enjoy today's tier list video, be sure to drop a like on the video as well as subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 3,000 subscribers, and I'd really appreciate a ton if you help me out along that journey. And uh, yeah, that being said, we can kind of jump right in. First up, we have a Pokemon that was just recently added back in Pokemon Home. We have a lot of Pokemon that were added back in Pokemon Home in Alolan Persian. Now, Persian had its like big heyday in Gen 7 where it had its Z parting shot, which not only, you know, functioned as parting shot where you could get out um you know drop your opponent's attack and special attack and get out into a threat and grab some great momentum but it would also heal the pokemon you went back into up to full can't do that anymore but it still functions as a very solid pivot with fur coat and access to parting shot and u-turn i do think it lost access to knockoff i'm going to double check on the side while we kind of finish talking about it and at least open up a team builder um because i'm not 100 percent sure if it kept it let's see Persian. did it keep knockoff it did lose knockoff, and I think that's a big, big, like, boon to it. Um, it not having knockoff is really tough because this thing's offensive viability is really bad. Only being 60 attack, 75 special attack. You're not really threatening much with this thing, um, and losing access to the big utility and stab knockoff is really, really huge. So, I think because of that, I'm going to put it in C tier. It would probably be in C tier regardless, but this is probably going to push it towards the bottom of C tier, in my opinion. I mean, not having knock on this thing really makes it a lot more passive and a lot more exploitable, in my opinion. Um... And at least easier to switch into. Yeah, parting shot exists, but again, it's it's kind of reserved to just a parting shot bot. Um, and I don't know if I personally prefer that. It does also get you turned nasty plot things like that, but yeah. Next up is a little Maka Pokemon that did lose some moves in Curse and Shadow Sneak, but it still functions very similarly to it did in um, Gen 8 Nat decks at the very least. I'm gonna put Muck in B tier. It's one of the best knockoff users in the game right now, um, and that's a big thing for me with a lot of these fatter dark types is access to that knockoff um, utility is going to be really, really big. This thing does have access to two good abilities in Poison Touch and Gluttony. You're typically going to see Poison Touch more now. Um, in Gen 7, this thing was a monster because of Gluttony plus Super Berries, doing 50%, basically giving you a recover. Um, that, you know, being able to heal up your health. And then access to Recycle back then, which, you know, would get the very back. Now it doesn't really have that anymore, unfortunately. But... It does have access to Poison Touch, which is a really, really good ability, as we see on Pokemon like Sneeze, Learn, OU right now. Being able to knock something off and poison it is pretty darn incredible. It did get access to new coverage and Drain Punch, which I think is a really cool aspect of um, Big Muck here. Um, and it's a really solid, just AV pivot, bulky, annoying dark type, great ghost resist, um, spreads some status, and just can be a big nuisance. Has good coverage, can memento if you need it to. Um, it can't set up and win like it could in previous generations with Curse, but... It's still going to be very good nonetheless. I'm definitely a big Muck fan, um, and I can definitely see myself drafting it. Next up, we have Galarian Moltres. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy up in A tier, specifically for its Terra capabilities. Now, we saw Galarian Moltres kind of pop off last year and be a very good mid to like upper mid tier dark type um, because of its setup capabilities. With its great bulk, access to Berserk once it got low, below 50 HP or 50% HP, getting it a uh, special attack boost, and access to Nasty Plot and Agility. This thing was a monster and very tough to deal with, especially with that high speed stat. It could really 1v1 a lot of its checks. Dark Flying is an incredible offensive typing. Really, really strong Pokemon. But now we factor in the fact that it can Terra into Terra Steel, into Terra Poison, into Terra whatever you need to Terra into in the matchup. And this Pokemon becomes incredibly overwhelming with Terra and damn near one of the best Pokemon on your team probably if you're tearing it. Now, there's the opportunity cost if you only have one Demon that you can Terra in a Draft League setting and you choose for it to be Moltres. That could be a little bit tough, but depending on the league's rules or how comfortable you feel with Moltres setting up and winning, I think it's definitely a very viable option to be a Terra Captain and be a very, very good one at that. So I'm definitely here for uh, Moltres Galar. Um, again, very overwhelming. It also gets access to U-Turn. It could be a very nice Spadef wall. Rest Talk sets are incredible as well. And it did lose access to Knockoff, which is a little bit tough. I don't know if it actually had Knockoff. I might be tripping. I know I Sucker. I don't know if I had Knockoff for sure, but... 
Yeah. Next up, we have Umbreon. I'm going to go ahead and put Umbreon C tier. This might be a hot take. I think this Pokemon... I'll put it below Persian. I'm going to say it. Per, uh, at least with Persian, it's fast. It can parting shot out. It can taunt things. It can be a nuisance there. Umbreon is slow and passive. It lost access to Toxic, which is going to be a huge thing for a Pokemon like this. Um, it's very, very passive and weak. It can wish. It can Moonlight. It can keep its team healthy. In that regards, it can spread Yawns and Thunder Waves if you need it to. But losing access to Toxic makes this thing just very, very easy to switch into and not very threatening. I think Calm Mind is a cool aspect for it. Um, but when you have 60 base special attack and 65 attack, you're not really threatening much. Um, it's kind of just a blob that sits there. I know a lot of people really like these Pokemon and their playstyle and keeping the team healthy in regards to that. But I don't know. Personally, I'm I'm not big on it. I'm, I'm really not a big uh, Umbreon guy. I don't know. Maybe I can be tripping. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I know a lot of people really love Umbreon and really hate playing Umbreon because it's bulky. But I think the more experience you get in the draft, like, the more you realize it's very, very, very mediocre. Next up, we have Hisuian Quillfish, a new addition to the Dark type roster. This thing's gonna go on top of C tier because of the fact that it is an incredible, incredible slow tier spiker with access to Eviolite, allowing it to um, gain a little bit of bulk on top of, of having access to um, Intimidate and a really, really good defensive typing as well in Dark Poison. Um, just a very tried and true defensive typing. When I think of it, I think of Pokemon like Drapion, Skuntink, even things like that. This thing can be really obnoxious. Um, Poison Point is also a very viable option. It's not the most passive thing in the world too. Still 95 base attack, which can be really, really annoying. You can go for Bar Barrages too and just poison everything um, and then get double power when, you know, you do get said poisons. You can go for Gunk Shots, Destiny Bonds. Um, does it get access to Thunder Wave? It doesn't get access to Thunder Wave, which is a bit tough like regular Quillfish does, but regardless, this Pokemon can be very solid. It gets Taunt, it's very fast too. And again, with that bulk of the Eevee Light, a very good low tier spiker and I definitely recommend it. Next up we have Sneasel though. We're getting into some pretty shitty dark types, I won't lie to you. This thing's gonna go in D tier, especially with no knockoff. This thing is terrible, it's weak, it's frail. I'm not gonna talk for an hour about Sneasel being terrible. We could talk about that with Weavile. Um, next up is Houndoom. I'm also gonna put Houndoom down here in D tier. Not the worst Pokemon in the world, but considering the options that you can get above it, I feel like it's pretty darn mediocre. Um, it's got a decent speed tier 95 in this meta game, but still not very fast. It's decently strong, but no bulk. Um, uh, is almost forced into boots every week, or you're just gonna die to stealth rocks, um, consistently. And it's not a Pokemon that's worth constantly removing those rocks for, in my opinion. Unless you have a crazy Houndoom matchup, which I don't think will happen. It does have cool utility options in, like, Destiny Bond. It does get Roar, which is interesting. I don't think you'll ever use it. Um, Will-O-Wisp is cool. Taunt. Things like that. And I think those, uh, tools would be a lot better if it was a little bit more bulky. Uh, it can also nasty plot with fire, dark, and poison coverage, which is always very good as well, but overall, I'm not too big on it. Next up, we have T-Tar here, and I'm really struggling. I don't know where I want to put T-Tar, whether it's in the top or in A. I think I'm going to lean A right here. Now, keep in mind, I am a huge T-Tar stand. I think this Pokemon is incredible, and not just on sand teams, because sand in general this generation is pretty mediocre there's not a lot of good sand sweepers or sand abusers especially without excadrill being in the metagame we didn't really get anything good this gen to really abuse sand but titar on its own is an incredible incredible pokemon very very good mon great offensive coverage great defensive profile obviously the big four times we can this to fighting but i think with terra this thing comes better offensively and defensively as well either setting up dragon dances or rock polishes it sets up rocks reliably it has crazy coverage physical special it's a great blue piece mon it's not a pokemon you like build your team around but it's a great pokemon to support the things that you have and things like that i'm definitely a big t-tar fan and even just the passive chip that sand does um being the only weather now that actually gives passive chip um is a you know very viable niche in its own right and uh um, yeah I'm, I'm a big t-tar guy i think if you're gonna draft a sand center this gen it's probably gonna be t-tar just because it's a better pokemon than have out on in my opinion so. yeah definitely a good pokemon next up cacturn i mean cacturn's gonna go below sneasel probably yeah i mean like it can spike and suck a bunch but it's weak it's frail it has bad typing it, it's just it's, it's a cacturn guys it is a cacturn of all time Next up, we have Honchkrow. I'm going to put Honchkrow at the bottom of C. I think it's a little bit better than the Pokemon in D. Not a ton better. Um, Moxie and Brave Bird and Sucker Punch and having good access to, you know, good offensive coverage. Um, having good priority despite being pretty slow. It can be pretty cool in that regard. It's not very bulky, though, unfortunately. Big HP set. Like that. Oh. Anyway. It does also have access to Nasty Plant. You can go physical, special, mix, things like that, which is pretty cool. But um, until a Honchkrow at the end of the day, I think the thing that holds it back is its speed tier plus its bulk. If it had like 
10 to 15 more speed, it would probably be a lot more viable, but um, it doesn't. 71 is pretty brutal when you have 52 in both of your defense stats, but again, good breaker nonetheless. Next up is Skuntank. Skuntank here is going to go in C tier as well. Man, we have a lot of C tier dark types right now. We have a lot of C tier dark types right now. Um, but Skuntank, again, good defensive profile with that poison dark type, and we talked about it before. It can be very, very obnoxious in that regard. Did it keep access to defog? It lost defog, which is a big one for me personally, but it does have to uh, have a good ability and having access to aftermath. Rocky helmet aftermath sets can be really annoying. You can go nasty plot sets. You can go physical special mix. It can be pretty solid offensively. It sets up T spikes. I think for its price point, it's pretty valuable. Um, it's definitely worse this gen losing access to defog for sure. Um, there's no debating that, but it's a pretty cool mod and access to a strong fire coverage is pretty cool on a poison type like this as well. So definitely can't complain. Good mod. Okay. Next up, we have Spirit Tomb. I think... See, I'm a big Spirit Tomb fan. I think I have to put it in the C, though. Now, the reason I'm putting Spirit Tomb in C tier, opposed to, you know, like, B, is... I feel like, one, it's a little bit less valuable for what it offers in something like Shooting Quillfish. But two, it gets a little bit overwhelmed offensively. Um, right now, with its no access to reliable recovery, it being pretty slow and things like that. But I think for its price point, this Pokemon really is incredible. The Ghost Dark typing is really, really good defensively, only having that one weakness to Fairy. And this thing is like the ultimate fighting type check, being that it's not weak to knock off or really any coverage that most fighting types get, as most fighting types don't get access to play rough, which is definitely really cool. Hold on, let me take a drink of my uh, coffee real quick. Just woke up, if you can't tell, by me sniffling and being tired and things like that. At least I'm not sneezing, though. Um, but yeah, it's Sphere Tomb, again, great value for where it's at. It's just its base stats and its um, lack of recovery kind of hold it back just a little bit in my eyes. But that definitely doesn't make it, you know, a bad Pokemon. It's a, it's a really, really incredible Pokemon, in fact. So we're going to go ahead and um, jump into the next one, which is going to be Weavile. Man, there's so many low tier dark types right now. Maybe I'm gonna need to adjust this list. I'm gonna do it. I'm putting Weavile in D tier. Um, I don't know, man. No, it goes in C tier. I can't do that to it. I can't do that to it. I am gonna put it above Alolan in Persian. I, it's so disappointing to see what happened to this Pokemon. It's not his fault, so I can't take it out on him. But losing access to knockoff, triple axle, um, these strong high base power moves that make Weavile strong. Now it's just, it's a shell of what it used to be. Taking away just knockoff alone was enough to like murder this Pokemon. But then they took away triple axle and that is so unbelievably sad for this thing. Now it has access to like Night Slash plus Crash, which Crash isn't the worst thing in the world. They got by with it before. But Night Slash is your physical dark stab. This makes it not worth it, especially with how many good offensive dark types there are in this metagame. And a lot of them are later in the decks, which we're actually about to jump into all of them right now. Um, it's it's pretty insane to see how far this guy has fallen from Gase. It, it, it really hurts my heart. It does, guys. I pro Man, it makes me sad. But um, regardless, we found it's going to go down here in C tier. It's just it's a cruel reality of the world. Um, next up, though, we have Hisuian Samrot, our first S tier Pokemon. I won't lie, I was a little bit underrated in this thing when it first dropped. It's like everybody's way overhyping this thing, but the more I use it and the more I conceptually understand the idea of attacking spikes that doesn't have an immunity, as long as you hit your 90% accurate move, you get a layer of spikes. It's so unbelievably crazy, especially when it's sharpness boosted and you have access to other sharpness moves like um, Aqua Cutter and, Aqua, er, and uh, Razor Shell. Uh, you have access to, I believe, x -Scissor. I believe you have... I know there's other sharpness moves. I know there's other sharpness moves on this thing. Uh, but you also have access to Sucker Punch and Aqua Just Priority. You can Swords Dance. You can go with Scarf, Band, AV. Um, Focus Sash lead sets are incredible in the draft format. I think this Pokemon is really insane. And it is so difficult to build against. It is so difficult to build against. When you take into account all of the cover... Oh, Sacred Sword. That's the other one. So fighting coverage on top of that. This thing is really really difficult to deal with um and it's really strong offensively has decent ish bulk you know provided you're investing into it and things like that you do it spin f is pretty rough but i think av sets are really good and then um you know you're setting up spikes for free just by attacking and being strong uh especially with no fairies in this format there's not a lot of good dark resists like yeah this thing's nuts uh it's just an absolutely nuts pokemon next up we have crocodile we're finally gonna go back into d tier or b tier not d tier for Krug. Krug for me would be an a tier pokemon if it kept knockoff, then it's the only thing holding it back from being an easier Pokemon. It's defensive typing, it's uh, bulk, it's offenses, it's ability to set up rocks, it's coverage, it's ability to bulk up, it's ability to be a Moxie Sweeper or an Intim Pivot with a Rocky Helmet or Leftovers. This thing is a really incredible Pokemon. Losing access to knockoff is tough because it also lost access to Darkest Lair, being its best dark stab is Crunch now. Which again, is usable. Not the worst thing in the world by any means, but... 
considering where Crooked Isle was, I have to put a B tier considering where it is now. If that makes any sense. So. Yeah, that's just gonna be me at least. Next up we have Zorark. I'm a big Zorark hater. I'm putting this shit in C tier. I think this thing sucks. I love Hisuian Zorark. I think it is much, much better. And this Pokemon in particular, it doesn't use its illusion well. It's frail. It's decently strong, um, but really only on like specs variants and things like that. And I believe it also lost access to knockoff. Oh no, it kept knockoff. That's pretty cool. Okay, you're better than Weavile. I've decided Weavile sucks. I'm gonna put Zorark above Weavile, but still in C tier for me. Its bulk is meh. It doesn't really get much use out of its illusion ability. You have to play very specifically with it, and um, anybody who can read or count is going to be able to tell what's your Zorark and what is not your Zorark. So, now that's going to be it for me, I guess. Next up, we have Bisharp. We're kind of moving through Gen 5 at this point now. We're going to go ahead and put Bisharp again, probably... I'm going to put it in C tier beside Hisui and Clawfish. Um, again, getting access to Eviolite is pretty cool for this thing. Giving it more setup opportunities. It never really had the opportunity to Swords Dance against good teams and players before with its pretty mediocre bulk. But now it can run that Eviolite and be a big nuisance. It can Swords Dance and Sucker Punch through things. It's a little bit faster than King Gambit, which is cool. And it can set up rocks. Again, the issue though is it lost access to Knockoff and it does not get Kowtow Cleave like its evolution does so again you're stuck with night slash as your dark stab and that's pretty terrible so it's gonna stay in c tier because of that i think if it had knock still it'd be a little bit higher personally okay next up we have hydreigon hydreigon's actually gonna go to the top of b tier i know a lot of people are like ah oh and it got rocks no i'm just kidding i know a lot of people are like ah oh and it's really good offensively and blah blah, blah. yes i'm a big hydra guy i would definitely draft it however i think the fall from grace if in losing roost is much bigger of a loss than any of its buffs with terra or stealth rock are because of the fact that those bulky nasty plot sets that would have just thrived in a Terra metagame are not possible anymore. They are simply not possible anymore. So I think that's a pretty tough aspect of um, Big Hydreigon here. It's still a great Scarf for with the specs. Um, I've seen AV sets do well because there is no Roost anymore and things like that. I've even seen the Rocker sets pop off. Life Orb is great. But I think losing access to Roost is so, so tough for Hydreigon. And I just, I have to put it lower because of that. I just have to. Next up, we have Greninja. Greninja's gonna go up here in S tier, um, especially with access to Battle Bond. I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, Gren's worse because Protean got nerfed. Protean got nerfed, but that's the only reason that's like bad for Gren, I guess, is now it's allowable in draft. We typically would ban Protean on Gren in draft before because it's too crazy with its coverage. Now you can run it and it's even better than it was before. Like Gren is better than it was in previous gens and Gren is like seen as like an incredible draft league Pokemon for its value, for its fast spiking, its coverage, its U-turn. All of these things, and now with access to Battle Bond again, it can throw off big, um, you know, it could get a kill and get a nice plus one, plus one, plus one to its offensive stats, and, you know, potentially clean through games. Now, obviously, it's way worse than regular Battle Bond, but again, that was just a broken ability before in singles, or at least in Draft League. Now we can have it. I don't know. I, I think Gren is much better this gen um, than it ever was before for us, personally. Like, obviously, it's not better in, like, the Smoke On metagame, but it's much better for us, personally, and uh, I think we gotta keep it here. Next up, we have Hoopa Unbound. I'm going to go ahead and put Hoopa in A tier just because of its raw breaking prowess and its ability to Terra. Now, its ability to Terra is really what sets this thing over the top. I think if you can Terra this thing, it lets it have um, a lot better like of an opportunity to pop off opposed to like Choice Band and Spec Sets or like Choice Scarf Sets out speeding offense because you can kind of shed that bad defensive typing and kind of, you know, work things to your advantage. Go, I've, uh, I got cooked by a Terra Flying sub called mine Hoopa a couple months ago. It was brutal. So... I definitely think that um, Hoopa is definitely really, really solid and um, very, very slept on when it comes to like Terra Captains and things like that in the draft format. I think we'll start seeing it pop off and gain a little bit more traction here soon, but it's definitely very good. Next up, we have Grimmsnarl. I'm not a big Grimmsnarl guy, but I think objectively, I do have to put it in B tier um, just because of the fact that it can facilitate so many scary hyper offense strategies with X light screen, reflect, and Parting Shot with Prankster, as well as Thunder Wave and a bunch of cool options. You can also go with offensive Grimstar sets, like, uh, you know, Sucker sets. Um, I've seen Choice Band do well. Uh, Choice Band with Trick, um, or Switch Rule, or whatever, which move it gets. Um, or access to Bulk Up Rest Talk sets, again, gaining priority in that regards, or just Bulk Up Resto Chesto is definitely a viable option as well. Again, good dual stab combination, uh, very strong. It's a little bit mediocre as a Fairy type defensively, but as a Dark type defensively, it's really not that bad, so. I'm definitely here for um, Big Grim Snarl here in B tier. Next up, we have Urshifu Single Strike. It's going to go in S tier. This Pokemon is debatably bannable. Um, I'm still leaning on the side of no ban as long as you're not allowed to tear it. I think Terra Hoopa 
is super broken. Um, it did get a nerf to Wicked Blow this generation, losing 5 base power on it, but it gained a buff in the form of Swords Dance and Trail Blaze to an extent, allowing it to absolutely massacre through fat. Now, I still think most of the time you're better off with the Scarf or a Band, just to it KOing everything, but now Urshu has that win comp potential with Wicked Blow, Close Combat, and Sucker Punch, especially in a metagame where there are no fairy types to be seen. So, I like that aspect of it for sure, um, and I definitely think Urshu is probably the best dark type on this, uh, on this list, if not close to it. So, uh, yeah. Next up, man, there's so many Gen 9 dark types. And for last Gen 8 dark type in Zarud, I'm going to go ahead and put Zarud here in A tier. I love Zarud. Um, I just recently drafted in WPF. It's a great pivot. It's very strong. Has good coverage. Lost Darkest Lariat, which is pretty tough. So now we have to rock out with Crunch for our physical dark stab. But not too big of a deal when you factor in its dual stats plus close combat and rock slide. It can be very strong. It got access to Sword Stance and Trailblaze this generation. I'm going to really boost up and go to town. And that's access to Acrobatics as well. So I think that like Terra Zerud could also be a big, big threat. It can taunt things. It can jungle healing and pseudo like heal itself slash, you know, get off any status on it, which is great. It massacres bulky waters. Very bulky, very annoying. Great Pokemon. I love me some Zerud. Next up is Overquill, a Pokemon I really want to try. I'm going to put it above Quillfish because I think it's a little bit better. And since the Quillfish might be a little bit bulkier with an Eevee life, but Overquill has more going for it. One, offensively, and stronger. I believe it's slower, but it's stronger. Now, 115 attack. Plus, it can much more viably run those Swift Swim sets and function well on rain teams with access to, like, you know, liquidation on top of its dual step combination. It can also Swords Dance and sweep through teams. And again, it can still spike up. It can still bar brush. It can still do all those defensive things that Quillfish can do. But it's a little bit better offensively, so I'm going to put it in C tier. It's a Pokemon I really want to try personally, actually. It's a Pokemon I really want to try personally. Um, but yeah. Next up, we have Meow Scrotta. Meow Scrotta is just teetering on A tier for me. Um, it might be S tier. I'm going to put S tier. I, I really like this Pokemon. I, I, I'm going to say it. Yeah, I, it might be the bottom of S tier, but I do think it is an S tier Pokemon. With access to spikes, it's crazy coverage. It's great speed tier, which is a luxury in Paldea Dex, which I haven't really talked about. It's very hard to get speed in Paldea right now. So having access to this thing, being very fast, is great. Sucker, spikes, it's a great spiker. Probably one of the best spikers in the metagame right now, if not the best. That's the ability to break through things with either Protean sets, uh, with like a Choice Man, things like that. This thing is very annoying, and it functions very well on so many teams. Great momentum grabber. Really good if you pair it along, alongside the right offensive piece. And uh, I recently drafted in a Showdown League, um, and it might be my first full season using Meow, and I'm very excited to use it. It's a really cool Pokemon. I know Joey used it incredibly last season in the BBR, so... Um, obviously a great, great Pokemon. Next up, we have Low Kicks. Now, where do I want to put Low Kicks? I don't think it's better than the Quillfish is, but I do think it's a good Pokemon. I'm putting it in C tier. It has way more breaking potential than anything in C tier. I'm also going to move down a couple of these guys because it's just getting a little too crowded in here. There we go. Um, it has great breaking potential. Very strong with Tinted Lens, First Impression. All this stuff. It's very hard to get onto the field, though. It's very hard to keep healthy unless your boot sets, which really lose out on their power. And it's very hard to fit onto a team, though, so that's why it's going to be in C tier for me. It's definitely the best offensive dark type in C tier, but it doesn't offer much utility outside of that. So that's where I'm going to put it personally. Next up is Bombardier. I'm going to put it right behind Honcho here in D tier, at the top of D tier. Not the worst Pokemon in the world, but again, with all these dark types, I don't really see a reason why you would want Bombardier. It's cool in the fact that it gets a niche in Rocky Payload, so it gets a third stab option. Um, and it can also set up Stealth Rock. I believe it gets Knock Off as well, which is, again, great, great for it. Does it get Sucker Punch? It does get Sucker Punch, Brave Bird, things like that. It does just need a little bit more going for it. I believe I did just do a Fixing Your Favors with Bombardier as one of the Pokemon. I think I made it better there, but... Yeah, that's just me. I don't think it's great, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to put it here in D tier. Same thing with Maboshtiff. I'm going to put Maboshtiff here probably at the top of D tier because I think it's a little bit better offensively than these guys. Um, has a very good ability in both Intimidate and Stake Out. Also, Guard Dog, which is immune to Intimidate, gives it a plus one. It's basically Defiant solely for Intimidate. Um, I wish they would have just given it Defiant. That would have been better. But 120 attack, 85 speed. Decently bulky and solid coverage with all these biting moves and things like that, which is really, really cool. Can really break through some teams very strong, um, especially on those stakeout turns where you're forcing in the fairy and you're doing a ridiculous amount of crunch and a choice ban because you're stakeout and you forced to switch. Which is really cool. So, definitely big on the bow stiff, I think, as like a really low tier dark type. I don't think I would ever personally draft it, but not the worst thing in the world, to say the very least. Okay, next up, 
we have big old brute bonnet brute bonnet's a hard one to rank for me i think i'm again gonna put in z tier i don't think it's worth drafting unless you have sun if you get that protosynthesis boost in the sun i think brute bonnet can be an absolute monster with an attack boost maybe even a terra it gets actually good coverage in close combat alongside dual step of you know dark and um grass it also gets access to spore which is really really valuable and pretty darn cool i don't think it gets swords dance it doesn't but again if we boost up that attack or we can growth in the sun i think in the sun this thing is very threatening outside of it it's not very good it's slow it's decently bulky but it has a bad defensive typing and its speed is just really what holds it back for me so that's where i'm gonna put it personally Next up, we have Roaring Moon. I'm going to tier Roaring Moon right here in second, assuming it is allowed to tear it. Now, if it is not allowed to tear it, it is low-key non S tier Pokemon. I think it's an A tier Pokemon. I also don't think Roaring Moon is broken enough to where it shouldn't be allowed to tear, though, personally. I know some people definitely do. I do not, and I think it absolutely neuters the Pokemon. Maybe it's just some bias, and I want to see my boy do well. I think it sucks without Terra, and I wouldn't draft it. But with Terra, it's a big monster, whether it be, like, just choice band sets with Terra Dark, um, whether it be setup sets with Terra Steel, Terra Flying, Acro sets with Booster Energy, things like that. This thing has an incredible speed tier. It facilitates other offense really well with U-Turn, and it can win games on its own if it is allowed to Terra. If it's not, again, then things are a little bit different, in my opinion. Next up, we have Iron Jugulus. It's going to go right here. Mm, where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it ahead of Hydreigon, personally, for the value. Um, it's usually a little bit cheaper in the leagues you're going to find it in. I think it is a better Terra Captain because of its ability to boost your energy um, and get a speed boost or a special attack boost. And it's higher speed tier. It is so much faster. Dark Flying is an incredible offensive typing. It has great coverage, just like Hydra. It doesn't have extra roost, but neither does Hydra. All Hydra has over it is better bulk, maybe a better offensive typing in this metagame specifically. And, um, I mean, is that it? Is that it? Yeah, I, I mean, that might be in Stealth Rock. Good old Stealth Rock. So, personally, I, I actually would very much prefer Jugulus on most teams, depending on what my team is doing and how much points I need to spend. And especially if I'm picking one to Terra, I would love to Terra Jugulus. I think it's a great Pokemon with Terra. It can be really, really scary for a lot of teams to deal with. Next up, we have Big Ting Lusky. Big Ting Lusky is going to go here at the top of A tier for me. This thing is just Hazards Incarnate. It checks everything. I have never seen a Ting Lu get o code by shit. I, it just never has happened. I've never seen it happen ever. The thing's never caught off guard. It always loses a hit from when it needs to live. It gets up a spike. It gets up rocks. It whirlwinds. It ruinations. It taunts. It does all these things. It's very, very simple in how it's played, but it's very, very good at what it does. So I definitely think it's definitely worth a pick here um, in A tier, at the top of A tier, at the very least. Then we have Big Chien Pao. I know I said Urshifu is the best Pokemon on this list, but I lied. It is Chien Pao, and you have no idea how excited I am to use this thing again in draft. Um, with Terra, it is is bannable. It should not be allowed to Terra. Um, I think we've officially finally learned that because it's ungodly strong with a Terra behind it. But even without Terra, this thing is so strong with Sword of Ruin. Um, it's dual stab being incredible, having dual stab priority and ice shard sucker punch. It's just mega weavile. It is mega weavile. Sacred sword, psychic fangs. It can swords dance. It doesn't have crazy coverage, but it hits what it needs to hit and it kills all of the Pokemon. Very, very good Pokemon. Very, very good one. Next up, we have Wochen. Um, again, I'm not a big Wochen guy. I'm going to go ahead and put it in C tier. Honestly, I'm going to put it behind Amoongus um, or Brute Bonnet. I would rather have Brute Bonnet because it's better offensively. Wochen is okay. Maybe if you can dedicate a Terra to it, but not a lot of leagues are really going to be putting you in a position where you want to Terra your Wochen. Um, but this thing, it can knock off, I suppose. It's bad defensive typing kind of holds it back. It's passivity kind of holds it back. I'm not a big Wochen guy. I'm just not, unfortunately. That's just me. Next up, we have Chiyu. Chiyu is going to go here in S tier as well. There's so many S tier Dark types, man. There's The next two are going to be S tier Dark types. Um, I think because of that, do I want to move down Meow? No, I'm going to leave it up there. Fuck okay, it. I love Dark types, man. The Dark types are so good. Um, but Chiyu, again, Wall Breaker Incarnate, especially if you can tear this thing into like Terra Fairy. There's nothing in the metagame that switches in and takes two spec hits. There's nothing in the metagame that... There's very few in the metagame that can take two Terra boosted... Um, Scarf hits as well if you're clicking the right button. You can even Nasty Plot and Flame Charge up if you want to try and win that way. You can will list your few checks that exist, like Azumarill, as they switch in. And go from there. Like, this this Pokemon is very, very strong and very tough to deal with defensively. Offensively, it's a little bit more easily revenged. Um, this isn't like Chien Pao, uh, just due to its speed tier. But, again, it's it's just so good offensively that it, it's definitely more than enough worth it. Next up, we have King Gambino. I'm going to put it here in S tier, assuming that it is going to be your Terra Captain. With Terra, it's really, really solid. Without Terra, I'd say it's a high A tier Pokemon. But even without Terra, it's great. Um, insane Volk, it sets up rocks, it swords dances, two great abilities in Supreme Overlord and um, Defiant, obviously. 
great on hazard teams. Um, great Pokemon in general. Great Revenge Killer with Sucker Punch. Not much really wants to take a Sucker Punch from a King Gambit. Um, and it's a really scary Pokemon. I'm building for it right now, and it is terrifying me for um, week one of Elite that's coming up soon. I, you actually guys don't know exactly about that team, that matchup, and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, that is going to be our tier list. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you disagree. If I rank things like Umbreon and Weavile too low. If I rated Wu Qian too low, I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of big Wu Qian fans out there, but, um, name for me but uh yeah let me know what your favorite dark type is in the comments below and with that being said i will see you guys in the next one Later.